Hello. Hmm. Sorry, folks. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit tired. I think you caught me napping. I'm afraid. <laughs> Well, why? I suppose it's because I uh, didn't get enough sleep last night or something like that. The official amount of sleep you're required to get, or you're supposed to get, to have a good night's sleep, if solid sleep, is seven to eight hours. But, man, I don't know why I'm, why I'm having these sleep issues. Maybe it's a Parkinson's disease related. Medication related, maybe DBS related. Being one of those three, I heard totally something different. Like maybe I spent too much time putting this video together last night. Could be the problem, issue, whatever. Sometimes the issue isn't so clear as to why you're not getting enough sleep. But Parkinson's is a big issue. And when it comes to sleeping enough. Today we want to go over sleeping issues with Parkinson's patients. I should offer a disclaimer though in that for the first five years of my Parkinson's journey I had zero sleep issues. I didn't have any issues at all. Now most people want sleep issues is one of the precursors to a lot of people's Parkinson's disease. But not for me. I didn't have any sleep issues. I can fall asleep like that pretty much. Stay asleep all night. All the way up until I got DBS. More on that later. For now, let's kick in the intro and get this show on the road. There you go. Well, before we begin, as always, I have an announcement to make. Small announcement. One big announcement, which is Merry Christmas, everybody out there in the land. Just wanted to let you know the next week, because Thursday falls on Christmas, and I'm probably going to be pretty busy anyway. I'm not having a video next week, but I will plan on one the following week. So I'll see you two weeks from today. Again, hopefully. Pray if all goes according to plan. Sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, I'm going to be using this information from this article. Sleep Disorders and Parkinson's Disease. Diagnosis and Management. That's what I'm going to be using for today's talk. Along with a little bit from a couple of other websites which I'll list down a link in the description below. One of the first facts the article lists in the very first sentence actually it blew me away stated that 96 percent of Parkinson's disease patients suffer from various sleep disorders. That's quite a few, quite a bit. It means even though I hadn't been, like, first five years, like I said, I hadn't had any sleep disorders. It means my time is coming. Yeah, I'd be, unless I happen to be one of those rare 4%, but actually I have had some sleep disorders for well, my DBS, as I mentioned in a bit. Um, but, so what are the common sleep problems people have in Parkinson's? According to the study, the quote from the article shows that the most common sleep disorders reported by the patients with PD were frequent awakenings, sleep fragmentation, and early awakening. I've had a little bit of both of that. Symptoms of depression and, du and duration of levodopa treatment slowed, showed a significant correlation with sleep disorders in the PD group. I say depression, obviously. You know, that keeps you up at night thinking about stuff. 
Why the why levodopa treatment? Well, obviously because if you have dyskinesia or pain in, due to dystonia in your arm or legs or wherever you happen to have dystonia, assuming you have it, then you will have like various pain issues keeping you awake. So there's a lot of solutions and problems with that. Anyway. That's very interesting when you look at all that and think about it. Okay, so first we want to look at the types of sleep disorders. Kind of get a broad overview of the types of sleep disorders you have, what their causes are, and the possible solutions for each one. First one we're going to look at is, is the sleep problems, is sleep initiation problems. That's so when you have difficulty getting to sleep initially. Now, one main cause of that could be poor sleep hygiene. What is sleep hygiene, you ask? <laughs> Glad you asked. You thought they only dealt with washing your hands and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Not right. Sleep hygiene is those activities and thoughts that signal to your mind and body to prepare to go to sleep. In other words, all the things you do on a routine and a cyclical basis, same time, same this, same that, that tell your body, I'm getting ready to go to bed. That kind of thing. I'm getting ready to go to sleep. Some people have bad sleep hygiene. Any number of things could disrupt one's sleep routine. Some PD related, others not, such as dementia. Obviously, that screws with all your mind, stuff like that. Uh, other maintenance sleep problems, like... Uh, Brushing your teeth is one thing. If you forget to brush your teeth one night or something due to dementia or, or just forgetfulness or whatever because you're just on, focused on doing this one thing, whatever, then you could have sleep problems. You disrupt your sleep hygiene. Another solution to that is obviously regular sleeping and activity schedules. In other words, plan it out. Always try to go to bed around the same time so you wake up around the same time. Always wake up around the same time. All those kind of things because if you get this out of sync, like if you have sleep issues, then you don't get enough sleep during the night. Then you get fall asleep during the middle of the day. You sleep a long time during the day. I think that's good. But not, no, no, no. It just makes it harder to get to sleep next night so other causes could be restless leg syndrome or what's known as periodic limb movement disorder uh, those causes can be idiopathic in most cases means they don't know what caused the issues or the problems however there's a um, It's the cause of being afflicted with another disease. On top of that, the restless legs obviously keep you awake. Uh, there are some s medical solutions. For do dopamine agonists are the common way to treat those kind of things. And uh, our just love it open in general can help. Um, a solution or opioids also can help with, with restless leg syndrome or, or periodic limb movement disorder. Okay, another cause is hallucinations and psychosis. Obviously, if you're imagining things at night, that could be a problem, right? Obvious, logical, yeah. Um, solution could be to reduce levodopa. I don't know how to pronounce this next couple of words, but they're medications. Quetapine or clozapine. Did I get close? Any medical people out there know the names of those medications? Anyway, uh, that's the possible solution, medical solutions for those two uh, situations, psychosis or hallucinations. And those can be common in Parkinson's. You do the other medications you're taking, like amantadine or 
Dopamine agonists are also known to cause that problem. Pain. Obvious why that's in there. Pain. You feel pain? You have problems, right? You have dyskinesias or dystonia. They're the main two culprits there. So what is that? Well, brief for those who haven't been following my me on my other channel and this channel for very long. Just, uh, dyskinesia is a result of involuntary movements due to extended levodopa exposure or levodopa you take to help your Parkinson's symptoms more likely you are to develop dyskinesias at some point in your life and some of those can be painful because they're involuntary movements you could end up hitting something like a bedpost the wall or anybody next to you Dystonia, on the other hand, is where your muscles, I have this in my right, left arm, so I know what I'm talking about on this one. Left arm is stiff. Of course, I had dyskinesia too, so I know what I'm talking about. I love it. Anyway, your, your muscles stiffen up in your arm, and it can be very painful. Matter of fact, back, I guess, is about four or five years ago, I decided to see how bad off I was. So I stopped taking my levodopa as an experiment to see where, what would happen. For the first four to five days, I was okay. Maybe a little tremor, but not anything horrendous or bad that I could, couldn't deal with. But then my dystonia kicked in. It started getting more and more painful. And I said, no, 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 no. So I started taking my levodopa again at that point because I didn't want to deal with the pain. So yeah, dystonia can be pretty painful. Um, so solutions for that is to adjust timing of dopaminergic therapy. Timing of dopamine. Now, what does timing have to do with it? Well, very simple. Dyskinesia one is is a um, result of. The, the, too much levodopa in your system so if you're having too much levodopa you need to cut it down especially before you go to bed so you don't want to take any levodopa too close to bedtime or you'll have dyskinesia around the time you should be going to sleep you know the other issue is if you have not enough yes it's a balancing act in some cases if you don't have enough levodopa in your system your dystonia may be overactive you have to deal with that so yeah that's how you can deal with that would by adjusting your 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 levodopa doses basically that's what it's talking about but those are problems getting to sleep now there's also problems in maintaining your sleep this is where most people with PD have most of their problems because here are some things like, like depression is a big one. Matter of fact, depression is one of those symptoms that they say can start way before you actually get your first tremors or whatever symptoms of actual Parkinson's disease you show up as. So your solution there is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, depression medications. And as I understand it, this is kind of a difficult situation for Parkinson's because from by Parkinson's 2.0 uh, seminar or whatever you want to call it, conference that I went to back a few months ago, they indicated that there's only really because of contradict can say that word contradictions, contradictions, whatever medications that don't work well together and give bad side effects we'll just call it that yeah the um, due to that there's only really one type of, of depression medication that, that they can have because apparently these SSRIs don't generally don't work well with Parkinson's and cause more side effects and issues than they prevent 
So, but anyway, there is at least one. And hopefully they'll break through and have some other ones in the future. Second type of sleep problem associated with maintaining is sleep apnea. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be related to Parkinson's per se. Oh, I suppose uh, with the muscles and the throat and stuff and things and that holds all the everything in place in there. Parkinson's could affect that and, and relax it too much. And due to swallowing issues, you can have issues related to related that would cause sleep apnea to be worse. But the main reason, the commonly commonly sleep apnea is called by people becoming overweight and having excess or what to say excess as the report says excess weight and obesity on one website now the solution to this is probably multifaceted one you can involve changing your lifestyle you might, you might look at my video on parkinson's and diet which involves lifestyle changes there that will help with that weight loss so that you want to get on your weight that's the main way you deal with sleep apnea. But also you have your CPAP machine. Which CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure Machine. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you, you have your CPAP machine to help keep your airflow in or you lose a lot of weight enough so that it helps solve the problem too. Take your pick. Probably have to be one and two or both combination there uh, especially if you don't have much weight to lose to begin with because it could be for other reasons that you have apnea sleep apnea and then weight issues but that's the common one it says okay the next third area where you can have sleep maintenance problem is in REM beha sleep behavioral disorders RBD is how it's referred to in the literature, REM sleep behavioral disorders. So what is it? Well, RBD is characterized by acting out the dreams that are vivid, intense, and violent. Dream and acting behaviors include talking, yelling, punching, kicking, sitting, jumping from bed. That could be bad. Arm flailing and grabbing. Now this is one I actually experienced to some degree due to my DBS. But anyway. Uh, causes in about 55% of the cases the cause is unknown. It's idiopathic. They don't know what causes, causes REM sleep behavioral disorder. Uh, the remaining percentages are due to Neurological diseases, of which one is Parkinson's. So, yeah, a lot of Parkinson's patients experience REM behavioral sleep disorder. Or REM sleep behavioral disorder, as it's officially called. What's the solution to this? Okay, solution is, is a drug by the name of Clonazepam. So, if you have sleep disorders, you want to talk to your doctor about that, if there's some help that's available for that. Or in the case of DBS, which was my situation, you just need to turn down your electricity at night. I have a, two settings on my DBS, as I think I mentioned last time. One that I use when I'm awake, the other one I use when I'm asleep, or I need to have more fluid, easier mobility, because the electricity going through my system kind of tends to make a little bit uncoordinated in, in certain ways. It's hard to regulate your movements so that they're refined. It's either on or off sometimes. By it's either like that. And but to make it flow in motion. It's hard sometimes. If you have DBS and you're experiencing that like I was, I flailed around, my arm wouldn't hit my wife, and in my sleep I'd do things. Now that I think I mentioned last time, one thing that made me realize I needed to turn myself down specifically was when I 
hit the wall when I was dreaming about playing tennis, swinging into the, swung my arm into the, into the wall. Ouch. Imagine that waking me up. Anyway. So that's a solution there. Now, the fourth cause of sleep maintenance disorder is something called nocturia, which is waking up because you need to pee. <laughs> now, most people, most people can handle, except occasionally, most of my life, as a matter of fact, I never had a problem sleeping. Occasionally, I'd have a little issue. My brain would be overactive, and I'd be sitting in bed thinking about things, and then, or I'd wake up in the middle of the night thinking about things, or I would wake up and need to go to the bathroom. But that was only on a rare occasion. Uh, however, now, since I've had DBS, I've woke up at least once every night, and occasionally twice a night. And I know some Parkinson's patients go, "Oh, you poor thing, that's terrible." Because they wake up like several times a night and have trouble getting back to sleep. I can wake up at night and usually, not always, but usually get back to sleep pretty, not too much trouble. But anyway, it's waking up because you have to pee. Causes of this could be high, influent, high fluid intake before bedtime. More indicative of PD is an overactive bladder or loss of bladder control where you feel like you're desperate so it comes on fairly suddenly when that happens solution to do the loss of bladder control is is exercising like Pilates and things like that it'll strengthen the core muscles and get the control back in there however there are medications like I don't know I'm going to butcher this one too oxybutin and and tolterdoline, whatever the tolterdoline to manage that over bladder issues. Talk to your doctor about that. He can probably help you out with that if you have an overactive bladder issue going on. But it's better if you can do some core strengthening exercises and the Pilates or or whatever core strengthening exercises you can do to strengthen those bladder muscles so that they you don't have a problem but I don't know why oh I know why one of the main reasons I started having bladder issues again aside from not doing any exercise since, for, since DBS a lot, well, I did some exercise there after DBS directly after, but since I moved to Colorado, I haven't done much at all. Therefore, I remember my bladder's weakened a little bit, but also, your solution is either to go to the doc, talk to your doctor about it, or if you have lost bladder control, maybe you can fix it by doing some exercises, whatever you're able to do. Um, the fifth cause of of uh, of it is pain. We already mentioned the causes of pain before: dyskinesia, dystonia that can make it hard to get to sleep. It can also wake you up in the middle of the night if you start experiencing pain. After all, most Parkinson's medications only last about three to four hours. Sometimes you can get up to five or six in the early stages, but as it seems to become less and less effective as you or so you have to take more and more of it in. So you have those problems, you get sleep, pain of any kind can wake somebody up, you know. But, but solutions are painkillers or anti-inflammatory drugs. Those are medical solutions. There is a, a, a helpful in what I mentioned in my Parkinson and diet video was that it's best if you can eliminate milk and dairy from your diet because those are known to cause a lot of inflammation. Matter of fact, they're usually known to cause a lot of Parkinson's issues too. There's studies showing 
that to be the case. But the diet, the lemony smoking dairy products, and instead eating plenty of vegetables rich in antioxidants is important. Ten of them are taken from our article and from Healthline are berries, broccoli, avocados, green tea, peppers, mushrooms, grape, turmeric, dark chocolate, cocoa, tomatoes, and cherries. You want the short thing, anything that's got color to it, has antioxidants in it. So, yeah, and that will help. It's more of a natural, a natural way for you to deal with the inflammation. If it's a, yeah, can help with that a lot. As one can see, there are various causes of sleep problems in Parkinson's. There's specific solution, and as well as specific solution, depending on what is causing one's sleep disorder. They're all over the place. Some may have some of them. Others may have a different combination. Still others, like me, may not have any. And others, like me, may only develop sleep problems when there's electricity flowing through their brain <laughs> due to a DBS implant. As they say, Parkinson's is a very individualized disease. What I've hopefully done here is to give you a wide overview of how complicated this can be and why it's necessary to discuss any issues you have with sleep issues, sleep problems, with your neurologist so that he or she can design a, a solution for you based on your specific situation. So with that said, that's how sleep orders are in parking rooms. Uh, this is Rick Topple signing off. Remember, do you. There's nobody can do you like you can. Hope to see you again in two weeks. Have a Merry Christmas. Bye.